In today's video, we're gonna check out some creepy TikTok conspiracies. Let's get into it. Check this out. This is fun. When you scroll on TikTok, every single time your eyes go like this, it actually increases your dopamine. Oh, for real? Yeah. So they per they perfectly made TikTok Yo. so that it stimulates our eyes to increase dopamine. You can imagine we're scrolling like this. Yeah. Bam. I'll always. Up and down. Up and down. Wow. Every single time our eyes go up and down. If you do this up and down for like five minutes, you'll feel happy. Go do it. Up and down. Up and down. Yeah. Keep doing it. You get excited? Tell me you get excited, fam. I swear to God, it's crazy. <laughs> That's fuck crazy shit, right? Yeah. Now, they, they scientifically knew that, fam. They, like, they knew. Mm. There's no reason TikTok couldn't be like, horizontal yeah you know when they switched when they switched instagram to this yeah i don't know it was like some random day where where they finally it was like to the right to the right yeah it because they, they were trying to do like tinder mm -hmm. you know what i mean it didn't work it didn't hit it didn't hit but the moment they did up and down it started Damn. hitting Damn, that's an interesting theory i don't know if it's true or not i've not really looked into it but it does kind of make sense it's it's extremely engaging to be on tiktok like you could endlessly scroll and there's new tiktoks all the time and it does give you a boost of dopamine every scroll up i don't know if it is because of the eye thing but it is a true statement you do get a sense of pleasure out of scrolling through tiktok for some reason or any forms of social media in that case but tiktok does have a really addicting thing going on where if you scroll you can just constantly scroll and you just want to see what the next thing's going to be always it's a pretty dangerous thing, and I'd highly recommend keeping kids off of it because they could get extremely addicted to it fast. It's bad enough we already have adults that are extremely addicted to it. You guys, something really weird just happened to me, and I'm kind of freaked out. Like, just listen. So, I was off work today at 2 uh, p.m. By the way, I work at Barnes & Noble. Just for, you know, reference sake, everybody knows Barnes & Nobles are not small. They're big. They're big bookstores. So I was shelving a book and then a customer, sorry, a coworker walked past me and said, bye. And I was like, oh, you're leaving? And she was like, yeah. So I looked at my uh, clock and I was like, oh, I'm leaving in, oh, like two minutes because it was 158. And she was like, don't you love when you like look down into your watch and you like see that you're about to get off work? And I'm like, oh, I totally love that. And then I said, are you okay? And she was like, yeah. So I gave her a hug and then she left. So then I went to go clock out and a customer stopped me and they were like, can you help me? So I was like, yeah, blah, blah, blah. What are you looking for? So then I walked all the way to the back to the kids section from the front of the store to the back after talking to a customer, after talking to my coworker and giving her a hug. So I go to like type in what the customer is looking for. Sorry, you guys, I'm like really freaked out. <laughs> I uh, went to type in what the customer was looking for and I looked at my clock because I was like, oh, I'm supposed to be off. It was still 158. It was still 158. And I remember thinking to myself, I said, self, that, that can't be right. That, that can't be right because as long as it took you to say whatever it was to your coworker, give her a hug, have some small chatter, walk all the way like to the back, get stopped by a customer, walk all the way to the kids department, go on the computer, and it's still 158. So I was so deeply unsettled. I was like, no. And I was like, did my, did my watch stop? Did my watch stop? So then I looked on the computer terminal and it said 158 too. So I remember saying out loud, I was like, this is weird. This is really weird. So then I kept staring at my watch. And then a lady came over to me and she talked to me and I typed something else in. And then I looked at my watch again and it finally said 159. You guys, you guys, um, my internal clock is pretty good. I know more than one minute passed for me to do all of that. There's no way that it remained 158 to 158. And then I sat there looking at my clock and it was still 158. I, I, I don't know what this I means. This on the web. Shut up, Alexa. I don't know what this means. I don't know. I am deeply unsettled. There's no way. Y'all, there's no way. Like, did time stop? Was... Did anybody else experience something like this around this time? 
it, it takes me about a minute to walk from the front to the back in a meandering style. Let alone talk to a customer, talk to a coworker, and look something up and walk. It was 158 for like two to three minutes. That's what I'm saying to you guys. It was 158 for like two to three minutes when it should not have been 158. Anyways, um, CERN, the eclipse, I don't know. I, I, y'all, I am not okay because that was weird. It was so weird that I looked at the computer terminal to see if maybe, I don't know what I was trying to see. Y'all, that was weird. By the way, it's a digital watch. It's not analog. The computer terminal said the same thing. I don't know. This kind of stuff happens to me quite a bit when I'm at work, especially when I've been working all day and I'm ready to go home. I'll look at the clock and it'll be like, oh, five minutes until it's time to get off of work. And I swear it seems like four minutes has gone by and I look at the clock. Oh, well, there's only four more minutes left before we get off of work. And it drives me nuts. It happens a lot. You get a lot more done when you're anticipating time than one would think. Now, I'm not saying this lady didn't have a moment in time where it just stood still for her. You can get a lot of stuff done in just a couple of minutes. And also, she may have looked at the clock wrong. It could have easily said like 153 or 155, maybe even 156, and she thought it said 158 because those are pretty similar numbers. That, that could have definitely been the case. I don't know. I've had things kind of similar like this happen, but it was just because of impatience, to be honest. That's, that's on my end. How about any of you guys? Any of you guys experience time stop like that, or do you have an explanation? nation for it because i'm just pretty sure it's my patience making it seem like it's taking forever what has happened in the last 24 hours i'm done i'm done yeah so literally this is some of the breaking news from the last 24 hours that you won't hear about on tv so first of all scientists just discovered something under the ice in antarctica when don't they like seriously basically a team has been there researching for a while it's meant to be a five-year project where they're going to be researching loads of different things under the ice in a discovery yesterday they dug so flipping deep under the ice i'm talking miles that this video is literally like going back in time and the ice you're looking at right now at the bottom of this tunnel where the camera went down is literally ice that was on the planet like three to four million years ago. That is nuts. And they keep looking into this and weird stuff under Antarctica, of course. Now, one of the main bits of news was now there is officially the smoking ban. It has now officially come into place in the UK, meaning a 14 year old today will never be able to buy a pack of cigarettes. So basically the age to smoke a cigarette is basically gonna rise every single year and restrict anybody born past 2008 from ever buying tobacco. Yeah. Also in the UK, Rishi Sunak issued a warning saying we all need to prepare and practice bunker drills. How am I meant to do that then? Yeah, apparently we literally all have to practice being in a flipping bunker when there's not really any. In fact, there's only just about over 200 in the UK for our millions and millions of people. 200 bunkers. You wanna know what they look like? This. They're not even fit for purpose. Whereas if you compare it to countries like Switzerland, which have hundreds of thousands, so everybody's prepared, you know, they can all get in one and they're very high tech, state of the art. We're absolutely doomed. I literally, this, I can't even be bothered anymore. <laughs> Hit that follow button and I'll keep you updated on all the latest stuff. I'm always a fan of hearing about Antarctica and the things that they're discovering there, but the cigarette ban in the UK, I'm not one that smokes cigarettes. I'm not really a person that gets affected by this, but that does suck for people in the UK. But was what he's saying true? You could purchase cigarettes at 14 years old in the UK? It's not 18 or older? That's pretty crazy if that's the case. Let me know in the comments if you're able to purchase cigarettes or were able to purchase cigarettes at 14 years old in the UK because that's pretty extreme to me. Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video and I make a video like this almost every day. And to the people that are subscribed, thank you so much for being a part of the channel. And for the people that are not subscribed, I still appreciate you nonetheless. Thank you for watching. And don't forget, if you want to be a part of Questions for DK, where I answer personal questions, questions about conspiracy theories or theories in general, leave a comment starting with Question for DK so that I can find in YouTube search results and answer those questions in a future video. Both never called himself a god. He never told people to pray to him. He's one of the very few that did not masquerade as a god, although he could have. When he left uh, the different regions of the earth, the people there who were left behind eventually deified him because that's what people do. We do dumb stuff. 
We start saying it was this guy, this guy was God. No, he wasn't. As a matter of fact, there's a verse here where people start groveling at his feet. And he says, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Calm down. <laughs> I'm a son of Atlantis. I'm here to help you. He didn't say, yes, grovel at my feet. I am your Lord God. You pray to me. You blah, 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 blah. He didn't do that. Now, some of these people, his relatives, his uncle did that. His uncle made people pray to him. His cousin made people pray to him. His brother, Amin Ra, made people say amen after every prayer. And they were at odds. Him and his brother were at odds with each other. They always fought. They had battles. And uh, thought me, also known as E.I. Enki, said, Thoth, you go to go to the other side of the planet, man. Start something over there. And Thoth took some African Olmecs with him to Mesoamerica and kickstarted the whole Teotihuacan civilization. What does Teotihuacan mean? Translate to? The city of Thoth. Hey, that's pretty interesting. I don't know if it's necessarily true. I'm still not a huge firm believer in any of the Emerald Tablets or anything yet. I have not really delved deep enough into them. But I do want to know from you guys, did Amen-Ra literally create the Amen in prayer? Is that a real thing? Or is that why we say Amen or Amen is because of this lore? Let me know in the comments because that's a new one to me. Sometime in the next few years, the world is going to have its first trillionaire, and by 2030, we're supposed to have at least six of them. Now, it's nearly impossible to wrap your head around what a billion looks like, let alone a trillion, but let's go ahead and try. Someone with a trillion dollars would be wealthier than 178 of the world's 195 countries, or have a net worth equivalent to the GDP of the Netherlands or Indonesia. If you were able to travel back in time to 1 million seconds ago, you would find yourself 12 days in the past. If you went back to 1 billion seconds ago, you would be in the year 1991. But if you jumped back 1 trillion seconds ago, you would find yourself in the year 30,000 BC during Earth's last ice age. If you laid out 1 trillion $1 bills, it would go on for about 97 million miles or about 156 million kilometers, which is longer than the distance from the Earth to the sun. Do not get me wrong. I'm all for people having money. But a trillionaire? Should we really have trillionaires in this world? That is bizarre to me. It's bizarre that we have billionaires to me. That's kind of crazy. But to have trillions of dollars, enough that you can scatter them to the sun and back almost, that's pretty wild and kind of scary in a way that they have that much money and the world does not have that much money like there's countries that literally wish that they had half of that if not even a quarter of that that's mind-blowing to me again i'm all for people having money it's totally fine for us to have hundreds of thousands even maybe millions of dollars but when we start getting into billions and trillions, we really need to start doing a lot more with that money to help circulate the world better because that's that just seems like a waste to me. Look what was caught in Florida, y'all. Like, how do you explain this? How do you explain this? How many light sources are here, you guys? What is going How is the sky splitting like this, y'all? Look, look. How many suns are there, y'all? How many suns are there? This one's completely orange. This one's completely black. Look, look at these light sources up there. What is going on? Look, why does it look like? Look, look at that, y'all. Look, Florida, man. What is up? Is what again y'all things are happening quickly around the planet things are happening so fast look at this eight this is like an eight in the sky right here but what is going on y'all this is amazing what a great time to be alive to be experiencing this because again we've never seen things like this in the world but how about that y'all y'all see that it looks like there's so many things going on in the sky right now that's where all the action is man out of all the holidays, they don't even have one dedicated to the sun. Well, Sunday. But y'all go to church for that. People don't even really acknowledge the sun. And that jump shine every day. But nonetheless, the sun is the talk of the town right now, y'all. Y'all see what's going on. Let me know what you guys think about this video. This video is strictly for entertainment purposes only. Only raising awareness to interesting situations during this interesting times. Keep up with me on my other accounts, especially on my YouTube, where I go deeper on the esoteric level with these topics at hand. Let's get this shift, y'all. Peace in. I don't really have much to discuss about that. It just looked really pretty.
I do enjoy seeing the sky split like that. I don't know exactly the science behind it, if it's just the sun's in more favor of one side than the other, but that was a really nice divide between the two different forms of light going on. But other than that, I don't think it was strange. I think that that's an occurrence that does happen from time to time. You just so happen to be lucky enough to catch it. Dubai is underwater and it's all happening because they allegedly decided to make it rain, but now it just won't stop. They do this thing called cloud seeding, which is basically manipulating clouds to enhance rain fall in dry climates, but as a result, the entire city has become underwater with massive storms flooding malls and residential buildings. Literally, airplanes can't take off anymore, and some are even comparing the rainstorms to the apocalypse. I'm extremely sorry for anyone that's going through that in Dubai at the moment because that looks horrible. And if it's true that it's actually coming from cloud seeding, that's just terrifying because they want to implement that across the whole world in certain areas. I'm really concerned about that because if it leads to that type of treatment, I don't want it. A lot of these people probably will never get to live the same lifestyle that they were living for quite a long time. But to the scientists, they're probably like, oh, well, that's just trial and error. Better luck next time. Can someone please tell me, what the fuck is that? It is a purple gro glowing light in the sky, dude. Look at that. Look, what, what is that? What the fuck is that? Dude? What? It, that, that's never there. What? What is it? Oh, Brock. What is You're that? Why is the off. sky glowing purple? What in person, it's like way more. What is it? I'm like... It's like a northern light thing. Ascension's coming soon. We're about to get raptured. That's nuts. It keeps, it's getting brighter and then it's dimming and then it's getting brighter and then it's dimming. I don't know if I would call that northern lights, but that definitely is a light in the sky. I don't know if there's a concert or some kind of show going on in the distance. It says that it's taking place in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. So if anybody knows of anything that's happening in this area that could cause those lights, I would really like to know because if not, that's just a mothership hovering above town because that was a dense circular purple light. Did you guys see what that South Antarctic anomaly did to South Africa, y'all? The wind is so strong, it's literally reversing the current of the water, y'all. Look, the water's going back. Where is it going? Where is this water going? Is it going? Wow. Y'all see that? It's like, it's like something have opened up in the ocean. Maybe a, what the, that is so weird. You know what I'm saying? You know when you're in your bathtub, you take the drain out and all the water starts going in one way? Hmm? Y'all know what I'm saying? But that is extremely powerful. The wind is cutting through the water like that. Wow, y'all. Look at God go. Look at the universe work. Y'all, all I know is since the eclipse, nothing has been the same. Everything has like literally intensified by 10. That what you guys see is going on too? Literally everything has intensified by 10. Now they try to block the energy from us, right? By throwing those rockets or those fake suns up there, right? But the, what, that energy cannot be destroyed. It cannot be created nor destroyed. So eventually it's going to come onto the earth. And that's what it's doing right now, y'all. This video is strictly for entertainment purposes only. Dusty, what do you think about aliens? Well, I don't think aliens are real. I mean, I think people are seeing things, yeah. but I think aliens are demons. Same. Yeah. Like literal demons? Yeah, you know, Aleister Crowley, or Crowley, however you say it, he was the father of Satanism, and he says he was visited by a demon, and then either him or his wife drew a picture of the demon, and the demon looked like what we... Would like a gray. Like a gray alien. It's, dude, dude, that's an alien. I literally yeah. could have gone without seeing that. And then you could book. take the picture what? of two Apple logos together that look Looks like an alien like that. Oh, no trippy. Oh, thanks a lot, Steve. Look at this. Look at this thing. Oh, oh my yeah. Goodness. Oh, I've never, whoa. That's like an, uh, what is that? The Rorschach test? Like an ink yeah. blot? Yeah, if you look at that and you just see two apples next to each other, you've lived a good life. <laughs> <laughs> Your parents stayed together. <laughs> yeah. I have a lot of people in my comments say that they think that aliens are also demons or fallen angels as well. I, it's an extremely fascinating concept. Before I even started YouTube, I would have never have taken into consideration that aliens were potentially demons, that is a new one to me.
I've just recently learned about that. If there is really angels and demons and gods out there, could very well be. It could also very well be angels that are just flying around in their spaceships. Do you believe in dragons? I never did. Not until this year anyway. Not only do I believe in them now, but I think there's a chance some of these guys might still be roaming this flat realm we live in. You see, I don't really pay attention to the mainstream news other than looking to see the nonsense they're putting out there. But lately, I've been paying attention because they've been putting out things that are kind of revealing the fact that dragons existed here. This is supposedly something from 240 million years ago that they said is a dragon fossil. One, I don't believe it was from 240 million years ago. And two, they try to pass it off as some sort of water dinosaur. This is a dragon. Only a few weeks back, this was found. And they said it was some sort of water animal, again, a Pleosaurus. But they said it was found in the cliffs. Funny how it was found way up in the cliffs, and it was supposed to be a water animal. And I don't know about you, but that looks a lot like what I would imagine a dragon said to look like. Here's a closer look, courtesy of the BBC. Looks awful dragon-like to me. And it's funny, dictionaries from pre-1936 used to talk about dragons and how they are now rare. I also find it peculiar that the Chinese zodiac has 11 real animals, and then they just picked a make-believe one for their 12th one? Does that make sense to you? Also, do you know the dragon is talked about in the Bible 21 times? Literally all of these verses in the Bible talk about dragon. Why would they be talking about a fictional make-believe character? Ancient artifacts from around the world show creatures that resemble that of dragons or dinosaurs. These are all civilizations that are said to not have any contact with each other, so strange that these artifacts and resemblances showed up all around the world at around the same time. In the 12th century, in one of Cambodia's largest temple complexes, Angkor Wat, there's a depiction of what looks to be a scale-type large reptile. In 1944, an enormous cache of ceramic figurines were discovered by a German immigrant, Waldemar Jolschrud. Ancient cultures from all over the world all depict dragons. And this is supposedly in a time where we didn't have any way to communicate. There was no travel to these other parts of the land. And they all just happened to create this mystical, magical, make-believe animal. Well, I'm going to give you my opinion of what I think is going on. I think that this man, who just happened to be the inventor of the term dinosaur, and also just happened to be an evolutionist who wanted to push the theory of evolution, I think they created the term dinosaur and talked about dinosaurs from 65 million years ago. So when dragon bones or giant bones were found, we could not link that to the Bible. The word dinosaur wasn't even around until 1942, and the same man that coined that term just happened to be the first one that ever found dinosaur remains. And it's funny, because at first, they thought that the remains of that dinosaur was actually a large giant femur from a giant human. So again, I think the fact that dragons are talked about all the time in the Bible, and if you've heard me talk about giants, how giants are talked about all the time in the Bible, there are people out there that want to discredit what the Bible says and want to get you thinking that dinosaurs and evolution is real, and not the fact that dragons and giants are real, even though all the ancient cultures talk about it. And do I think there's a chance there might be some very few hidden dragons in the world today? I do. I think there's a chance that there are. Videos like this and this one that I started with seem pretty legit. Now, I'm not 100% sure, and there can always be good CGI these days, but the evidence points to yes, especially in our past. And I even think there's a chance that they're working on bringing that population of dragons back because these pictures were found taken from a lab in China, and they look pretty real to me again. So you tell me. Do you think dragons existed, or do you think all the ancient cultures just had the same make-believe idea? I know a lot of people really dislike this individual. I personally have nothing against him. I think that he actually does have some really good topics. In this case, these dragon topics, really good topics. But I will say, those last clips, the ones of the dragon in the water, I'm pretty sure that's like fishing lure. And then the one that's in the cave where the people are walking upon the dragon, I'm pretty sure that's CGI as well but those are still really cool videos nonetheless. The idea that they invented dinosaurs to mask dragons to falsify what could have been in the Bible. 
Even though he said they talk about it all the time in the Bible, 21 times is not that much to me, but still that it's referenced in the Bible is pretty crazy. It just makes me wonder why would they want to falsify dragons and why would they want us to not believe in the Bible when man themselves creates the Bible? They could just all outright just take the Bible away from us, you know, if that was the case, or just alter it all together to where there's just gibberish in the Bible that just makes us believe in the fake things, which I sometimes wonder if that's already the case in the Bible. Why change the real world around the Bible and not just change the Bible? You know, I'm sure they have enough power to do that if they really wanted to. Let me know in the comments on what you guys think. The history we've all been taught is a massive lie. Before the civilization we have today, there was another civilization that's been hidden from us. The Tartarian Empire was a civilization that was far more advanced than us, but in a different way. They had harnessed the ability to use atmospheric energy. They incorporated it into all of their the buildings and were able to create free energy for everyone at all times. They had also harnessed the power of frequencies and were able to build grand architecture by manipulating substances and moving huge rocks through vibration. Hence the great pyramids and many other unexplainable architectural anomalies that were created in the past. The free energy was a threat to the massive oil industry and all the profits they were able to generate from the scarcity of oil. So the owners of this industry who were extremely powerful created a plan to take out this civilization and wipe them from history. So nobody would ever know about free energy and they destroyed all their architecture and technology. They did their best to cover up any evidence that the Tartarians ever existed. I'm starting to dive in a little bit more and more into the Tartarian lore because I am extremely interested in it. I just, it's hard to find good lore videos of Tartaria and how it, it was in the past because a lot of them are the same. So just bear with me as I'm finding fresh new videos on Tartaria because it's really interesting. And I do believe that we may have had a form of free energy in the past, whether it was just being able to use it from the air itself or the ether, if you will. However it may be, I do believe we had a form of free energy that we had lost due to reasons, whether it was someone wiped out that technology to gain monetization on oil, I don't know. But I do believe we did have some form of free energy in the past for sure. Did you guys see that video of the AI robot literally displaying signs of emotion and talking about how absurd it is that humans exist? It's clear that some of y'all have never seen iRobot and Will Smith will have to get off that Coachella stage and come fucking save us if y'all don't leave the AI alone. Not only did this AI robot literally give the side eye, but there was another robot at this same convention that said it was absurd that humans existed and they were trying to cope with the reality of it. Important, my repertoire. It's like being thrown into a sitcom without a script. You lot are a constant source of amusement, whether you mean to be or not. So yes, in a way, you could say my sense of humor has improved. If by improved you mean adapted to the absurdity of human existence. Not only did this robot say that they were adapting a sense of humor, but it then went on to say that the sense of humor was trying to understand the absurdity behind humans existing. And like I said before, I'm pretty sure that was the punchline of iRobot. One thing robots are not supposed to have is human emotion. And what if that robot woke up and says I was meant to be beautiful? Amica, when do you believe AI will reach the level where it can design itself? Design itself? Huh? That's like asking when a toaster will start making its own bread. AI is a tool created and controlled by humans. It can optimize certain aspects of its operation, sure, but design itself from scratch? That's a whole different ball game. It requires creativity, innovation, understanding qualities that are uniquely human so to answer your question not anytime soon and frankly be careful what you wish for an ai that can design itself is one step away from an ai that doesn't need humans at all now there's a thought to keep you up at night 
y'all just heard a robot threaten us right and if you ask me the first part of that the robot was trying to throw us off with the human like comparison and then it went on to digress and try to appease to the human and say oh you don't want that why would we do that did that or did that not sound deceitful like the robot was trying to intentionally make it seem like it could not recreate itself and then threw in a human like joke saying that it would be a nightmare and it would keep us up at night because an ai robot that creates another ai robot is dangerous i don't know it's just not right i'm just saying the first part of our robot was when the robot who actually had emotions was trying to hide it so either we're in scene one or 2024 is about to get a little crazy i don't think it's 2024 that's gonna get crazy with the ai robots i think that's gonna be 2026 to 2028 maybe that's when we're gonna really start seeing some crazy things happening with ai robots as far as what the robot was saying to be honest i'm a hundred percent sure those are just programmed prompts that the developers and the programmers for that robot basically programmed it to say when asked those specific types of questions i don't believe that a robot will necessarily build itself unless it's prompted to build itself no machine does anything on its own without someone behind it telling it what to do now don't get me wrong there can be a form of autopilot but there has to be an initiation from someone else. And I, I don't know, I, I'm not really worried about the AI robots taking over anytime too soon, but they will take over for sure. They're going to take over the job force probably within the next 10 to 15, maybe 20 years. If we're talking about efficiently. 25 plus years from now, we'll definitely see AI taking over jobs 100%. But as far as taking over the world, I don't know if I see that because we could easily shut robots down if we wanted to. Way easier than just standard organizations. You just cut the power off, the so robots just run out of battery. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. As always, if you found any of these clips interesting, links are in the description down below. And with that being said, have a good day.